Uh, but first of all, you're going to play the role of outrage correspondent because we've got our own troublemaker in the building, Aaron Bastani. Uh, you've probably seen him being denounced from many a quarter in the last five days. Uh, so, Ash, I'm, I'm passing over to you. I mean, so let's have a little look at some of the brouhaha that you've managed to generate. You have angered the Daily Mail, who described you, I think, as a, a top Corbyn attack dog, uh, oh. disrespecting troops, etc. <laughs> we should have a little image of that. There we go. Uh, yep. Attack dog saying, uh, people look, saying that you should be thrown background. out of the party. Yeah. yeah, I know that marble does look great, doesn't it? Very, very pleased with our design team for that. Uh, you were disavowed on uh, Ridge on Sunday. Mm. Um, this is the only time I've watched Ridge on Sunday, so thanks for that. Uh, by uh, Nia Griffith, uh, Shadow Defense. NATO Nia. NATO Nia, she loves a bit of NATO. Um, who was saying that... Uh, your membership of the party should be called into question. You shouldn't be in it. And you also... Well, she said I shouldn't be... I didn't, well, obviously, I didn't watch it because why would I watch Nia Griffith on Sunday? But why? Well, I, I shouldn't be a member. What rules have I broken? Well... No, she said the party will do it. Uh, she said she'll leave it to the, the people who do the procedures to, to work it out. How have I broken any rules? This is ridiculous. Well... <laughs> Save we don't the, make the rules, sa Aaron. Save the biggest of the dogs till last. Yeah, go on. You've managed to rile up none other than deputy leader of the Labour Party, Tom Watson, mm. who uh, tweeted about you, um, who has uh, distanced himself from uh, your uh, your comments, your appalling statement. Mm. Um, be fair to him for a second. Yeah. Be fair to him. You did call for him to resign just in August. So I think this is a bit of a back and forth between the two of you. So, Aaron, here's your chance to tell us. And also, a lot more's happened um, in between then. So it wasn't just uh, the usual suspects in terms of the right-wing media. It wasn't just uh, senior figures in the Labour Party. You also had some mad fascist look up an old address of yours mm. um, and say that uh, him and his friends would hunt down mm. any leftists who were... Uh, engaged in what he called a uh, disrespectful speech. He liked yep. freedom of speech, but disrespectful speech, he would uh, hunt us down. Yeah. Well, Scary you know. times. He was Facebook living it, and uh, he was sort of, yeah, I was doing a call out, and then I just posted a comment, and I said, look, if you think calling for better aftercare for 13,000 homeless veterans is so bad, then I apologise. He hasn't replied. He's also broken the law, I think, by... Pretty sure it was incitement, yeah. I yeah. mean... I mean, whatever. And he, I looked at some of his gym pics. Why are you taking selfies when, you know, you can't even bench more than 190 kg? Silly. <laughs> <laughs> I Silly. Re <gasps> really hope he's watching. So, Aaron, now's your time. Defend yourself. Why do you hate our boys so much? No, I made several points. Mm -hmm. um, and I was critical of the poppy appeal, not the act of wearing a poppy. I don't think wearing a poppy is racist. My dad wore a poppy three days ago. Most of my friends and family have worn poppies. I don't think they're all racists. Um, I think the poppy appeal, I said, I think my exact words were, can tend towards military triumphalism, which, yes, of course, would be racist. I mean, military triumphalism by a formerly colonial power, you know, necessarily will obviously have those kinds of overtones. Um, a few other things as well. I, I, I felt like it was in quite bad taste. The idea that the First World War, and of course, yesterday was commemorating a century of the First World War ending. The idea that was a war for freedom I just find quite perplexing because in 1914, British working class men couldn't vote. Uh, German men could vote after 1871. Women under 30 in this country couldn't vote until 1928. Um, and of course, the year after the First World War ended, there was the Amritsar massacre in India where a thousand Indians died. It was seen as the birth of Indian nationalism. I mean, were they freedom fighters, the people that were shooting those people at Amritsar? Or, you know, when the Brits got rid of Mossadegh in 1953 in Iran, a democratic government, was, was that freedom? or when they oversaw regime change in a range of countries across the Arabian Peninsula, really up until, up until the 70s. I mean, you still have it softly in terms of assisting the regimes up over there. You've got Bahrain, Saudi Arabia. So those were my misgivings. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I thought I was pretty clear, but obviously when the, the sort of the, the, the shot to the heart, the silver bullet, was obviously these people condensing a 59-minute video mm. to 70 seconds. Uh, the things I've said about veterans and so on. And clearly, if your grandma had cancer, you wouldn't be like, oh, thank goodness there's this charity looking after her. You'd be like, well, I pay my taxes to the state to do this. So why, if this country loves its military so much, why is it relying on a charity for aftercare? 